Hey, this is Nick with a follow-up to my video on handling multiple entities in one QuickBooks Online subscription. If you haven't checked that out yet, certainly do so. Many of my students, my clients, and my own businesses are using this super effective strategy. It really is amazing, but I wanted to go through a few potential pitfalls, some mistakes to avoid. These are some pitfalls that we talk about in great detail in our conversations in my end-to-end -end course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. Definitely check that out as well. But wanted to get into it here with you so you're aware of some of the mistakes to avoid to this amazing, amazing strategy. So getting into it, three multi-entity mistakes to avoid to really make use of this amazing strategy. I'm going to demonstrate all these, but let's go through them quickly here. One is using the transfer or the credit card payment transaction type. We absolutely cannot use that. I'm going to show you why. Second, inconsistent business and property. Okay, so we get a little bit confused when we have a transaction that might be one business, but for a different property, it's a little bit tough. I'm going to show you why we don't need to confuse it. We can keep it really simple. And third, and potentially most detrimental, is mixing up our balances on our journal entries. This is something that we have to be aware of. We don't want to throw off our balance sheet. So with that, let's go into QuickBooks. I'm going to demonstrate all of this for you here. All right, so. In QuickBooks, again, what are we talking about when we're talking about multiple business entities in one subscription? We are able to use the location tracking to have multiple entities in one subscription. Okay, now again, I have a video on exactly how to do that. Check that one out, but I wanna assume we already have that. And with that, what do we get with our reporting? We're able to get a balance sheet that shows us business by business how we're doing, okay? And then we can take this and we can filter it down for tax purposes, all right? So what I'm gonna do to demonstrate is I'm gonna go way back in time to kind of like a super sample set of books in 2016 just to kind of demonstrate some of these pitfalls and how they affect our balance sheet, our P&L, et cetera. Okay, so we have a couple businesses here that we're demonstrating with. And again, the first thing that we wanna avoid is uh, grabbing our transfer or our credit card payment transaction type. We absolutely cannot use these if we have multiple businesses in one subscription, okay? So on our bank feed, we might have money moving between two checking accounts. So on this set of books here, I got this checking account, JMB checking, and then M&T checking. Right, so we're gonna kind of think about this. M&T checking is owned by 264 Union LLC, and JMB checking is owned by JMB Investments. So in theory, those businesses should be doing work within those accounts. So what we might have is we transfer money between the two. This is a really common thing that happens. We don't need to not do it. We don't need to avoid doing that transfer, but we need to avoid using the transfer transaction type. So I could easily go in here and click record transfer. Right now I'm in the JMB set of books. I could say, hey, this is a transfer from M&T. And it's really tempting to do that. But notice when I start to do that transaction, what am I missing from this dialogue here? I've got no place at all to indicate the business. So if I were to record this transfer, I'm going to get a not specified. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna kind of mimic that exact transit transaction in my 2016 sample set here. So I'm gonna do a transfer from one account. So let's say the JMB checking account. Okay, I'm gonna move money from this account. I'm gonna move it to this account, all right? And let's put, make this transfer date 2016 so it shows up in my books, okay? So it's really tempting to do this. Let's transfer $10,000, okay? I'm gonna save and close that transaction. And what are we going to get? As soon as I do that transaction, I get not specified showing up here. And that is something we absolutely cannot have, okay? If we are using classes or customer, we can have not specified or generalized expenses uh, or balance sheet items, but we're using businesses, locations, we absolutely can't have not specified. We need to deliver a fully comprehensive balance sheet for each of these entities, and this not specified is not going to allow us to do that. So we can't use the transfer transaction type, and a credit card payment's going to do the exact same thing. Those are two transaction types we can't use. So what do we do instead? I'm gonna delete this transaction here. So what do we do instead? If there is a move of funds from one from one uh, business to the other, what do we do, All right? And it's actually super easy. We, we don't even need to go in and do a journal entry. We don't need to do that. We can do it right from the bank feed. So in my bank feed here, this 113869, again, this is coming from J JMB. All I need to do is go categorize here and I'm transferring money, but I can just categorize it as M&T. And notice now I've got the business here and I've got the class. Now the next question that comes up is like, okay, well, what business do we use? This spans multiple businesses. I'm gonna get into that next, okay? The idea here is that it doesn't really matter at this point in time, we gotta put it to one of the businesses, we can sort out uh, how to move it back and forth as, as uh, in the future. Okay, so we're gonna indicate our business, 
our class is probably going to be something like general or not specified. You could even do not specified for class, but you absolutely cannot leave your business blank. So similar, that exact transaction I did, if I want to replicate it here, instead of my uh, doing a transfer, I could do a deposit or I could do an expense. It's just what perspective is the transaction happening? So let's say that the expense came from my JMB checking account. Okay, and what was the category? It's M&T checking account. Okay, nice and easy. Again, business here, I'm gonna indicate one of them. I think rule of thumb generally, like from what account is the payment coming, makes sense. Again, it doesn't really matter. We're gonna be able to sort it out uh, in the future as I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put class as general and that's it. So what this exact transaction is exactly like me doing the transfer, except I gain the benefit of having the business in there. And so when I save and close this transaction, I should see the funds have moved and I don't have a not specified there. Okay, what I do have is a balance for M&T for a business, okay, that, you know, JMB does not own this checking account. That is something to deal with, and that's what I'm going to get into next. The next thing we do is we get confused about what business to allocate, and we start, you know, tying ourselves in knots, right? That exact transaction I did. And my advice here is it doesn't really matter um, what business we allocate expenses to as long as we're consistent with our thought process and then we sort things out at the end of the year. And this really uh, rears its head when we have like an umbrella business that's doing spending on behalf of other LLCs or other businesses and we start thinking about like, oh man, I spent money on this business's credit card for the other business's property. How am I gonna treat it? Do I do equity? Do I do all these weird things? And the answer is no, keep it nice and simple. Now, one thing you can do is get separate credit cards, separate bank accounts for each of your entities. That's an okay approach, but you don't need to do that. It's really tedious to do that. And many of us you know, have, like myself included, we have one kind of customer facing brand, one customer facing umbrella company, get the credit card for that company, get the bank account for that credit uh, company and do a lot of the spending. But let's just say, that you know, I got a credit card, JMB Investments has a Visa card, and we're spending on a, a property that we don't own. What do we do about that? So let's record an expense for um, 264 Union property. So payment account is gonna be that Visa. So I'm using this Visa, okay, this business Visa account that's owned by JMB. I'm using that account to do some spending, okay? So my category, I'm just gonna do repairs and maintenance, and I'm gonna say that I spent uh, $7,500 on something, whatever, I just wanna have a number out there. And this is where we get really confused. Okay, I'm spending from JMB's business visa, but I'm spending on 264 Union, okay? So I'm spending on a different class. So what do we do about the business? And this is where we get confused and we think about like, oh man, well, this account is owned by this business, so shouldn't it be this business? The answer is, I feel no. Always indicate the class and just, I always use this term, tell the truth, right? What property was this actually for? Indicate it right there or customer if you're using that. Indicate what property it's for. And then the second question you ask, what business owns that property? That's the business we're gonna record this to, okay? Now I know right now that this business does not own this credit card account. So we might think in our head, oh my God, we're gonna get mumbled and jumbled and all turned around. Just let it be. I'm gonna save and close that transaction, okay? And what does it do? Well, the one thing that it does correctly is it puts the net income where it needs to be. That's super important. The one thing that it does that's like, oh, what are we gonna do about it is this 7,500 bucks that is showing up on 264 Union Holding Account, right? That's kind of something I'm gonna have to deal with. But the thing is, through the course of the year, this does not matter. All this does is it tells us that, hey, we've spent $7,500 from this credit card for this business, okay? We know internally that this business doesn't own this card. We know that this balance is probably accurate with what the bank says. All we need to do by the time we get to the end of the year, when it's time to prep for taxes, we need to just clean this up. This 10 grand needs to go over here. This 7,500 needs to go over here, okay? That's all we need to do, all right? We could do that with a really simple end of year transaction, with it, which is intercompany equity. Now this exact transaction that I was about to do, let me show you what a lot of people do uh, for that transaction, all right? We'll go in and say like, well, I need to indicate a separate business for each part of that transaction. They're gonna go do a journal entry. And this is a mistake, big time. So we say, all right, I got my repairs and maintenance. I'm spending repairs and maintenance. That's a debit of $7,500. And this is for 264 Union. 264 Union is owned by 264 Union LLC, all right? Okay, and I'm using my Visa card for that. Now the Visa card is owned by JMB Investments, right? And that is general, 
Okay, this is what a lot of folks do, and this is a mistake for two reasons. One is we have a mismatch in debits and credits. That's the most important reason this is an issue. The second is this is super tedious. I want you to be able to make quick transactions, make use of products and services, use the expense account, use your bank feed, right? You shouldn't need to use a journal entry every time you spend money on a credit card that's owned by a different business. Absolutely not, right? So this is a big mistake. Let me show you why this is a giant mistake. All right, so I'm gonna do that right there. Now, as I do that, the 7,500 shows up in the right spot, I guess you could say, and the net income shows up in the right spot. But what that does is now I've got a mismatch in assets equaling liabilities and equity. Now, this is the fundamental account accounting equation. Assets must equal liabilities and equity, right? Now, at a total level, that's always going to be the case. It's impossible for QuickBooks to let you mess that up. But when we start doing journal entries and mismatching our debits and credits by business, we have the opportunity to really mess this up. So if I were to take this uh, you know, report and I were to you know, kind of filter it down to deliver it to my accountant to just say like, here's my 264 union balance sheet for the year, okay? If I were to deliver this to my accountant and they saw that I had liabilities not equaling liabilities and equity not equaling assets, they're gonna ask, what the heck happened? How is that even possible in QuickBooks to do? Now you have this really intense kind of cool thing that you're doing, but you gotta be careful that you don't mess that up, all right? And so that's why we don't use journal entries for those transactions. My advice is to let those things build up, meaning let those you know mismatched transactions build up don't create journal entries. It takes too long. It's really tedious. And we open ourselves up to this opportunity of really messing this up. Just let these balances build. And then we're going to offset them with a really simple year end transaction. I'm going to show you exactly how we do this. All right. So at the end of the year, and, and I do this at the end of the year. I have some clients of mine, some students who like to do it at the end of every month, at the end of every quarter. And that's okay. To me, it's like, I don't really mind that this stuff builds up in these places it shouldn't be. I just, at the end of the year, 1231 of the tax year, I fix it. And so what does that mean to say fix it? Well, this checking account shouldn't have a balance for JMB Investments because JMB Investments does not own that checking account. I need that $10,000 to go all the way over here, right? That's one thing I need to do. And similarly, I need the 7,500 to go all the way over to JMB, right? So if I were to look at the balance sheet for 264 Union, I don't wanna see anything on this 264 union business that isn't owned by it. So this business visa, I need to get that off of there. All right, and we can do that really simply with what's called intercompany equity. Basically intercompany equity helps us tell the story of one business spending on behalf of the other. It's a way for us to kind of sort this stuff out. It's really, really easy to use. And I'm gonna show you how to use it. So the first step is to create an account within your chart of accounts called intercompany equity between those two businesses. I just did it here. Intercompany equity between JMB and 264. So any kind of two business relationships, you're gonna create an equity account. Now I go into great detail in Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp on how we can create like a hub and spoke model where we have like one account, one business that's doing all the spending. But just for all intents and purposes here, we're gonna have one account that handles the back and forth between these two. And so all I'm going to do, let me kind of break this out a little bit. I'm gonna um, just separate my screen for a second here. Okay, we'll go here. All right, so I'm gonna take this 10,000 is gonna move over, over. And this is a really simple journal entry. Okay, so this is always the last day of the year, 1231, 2016 in this case. I'm gonna take this account, M&T checking, I'm gonna have two lines for it, okay? And one line, I need this 10,000 for JMB to go to zero because JMB does not own this account, right? So to get that to go to zero, I need to credit it 10,000. $10,000 for JMB, and I can use the general class or not specified class is fine. For, and then I need it to go up 10,000 for 264 union, okay? Now, you're probably looking at this and you're like, well, don't we have an issue with debits and credits equaling each other? The answer is yes, but what this will do is gonna move that 10,000 over. Now, I've got one more step to do. I'm gonna show you that in a second, but this right here is, is the, the first step, all right? I'm gonna save this just so you can see why I'm not done yet. I'm gonna refresh my balance sheet over on the left-hand side of my screen, and you're gonna see that I would had one step of success. I've moved the 10,000 over, but now I've got the issue of assets, liabilities, and equity not equaling each other. I've got one more step 
And that's the intercompany equity side of this. And what's happening is my debits and credits totally equal each other, but my debits and credits by business do not, right? So what I'm gonna do now is intercompany equity. I'm gonna do two lines, intercompany equity, JMB to 264, intercompany equity, JMB to 264. One of these is gonna be JMB. General's the class, they're not specified as a class. One of these is gonna be 264, general's the class, okay? And because I've got $10,000 credit for JMB, I better have $10,000 debit for JMB. Whoops. And, I don't know why that, okay? And then just like I have $10,000 debit for 264, I better have $10,000 credit for 264 as well, okay? Now, what I like to do is my business, my journal entries here, I like to click and drag this up so I can see really easily JMB investments, debits, credits equal each other. QuickBooks is not gonna do this calculation for me, I need to do it on my own. Save this transaction and I've just successfully balanced out this balance sheet so that my assets and liabilities by business are in check, okay? Assets, liabilities and equity are looking good. How did I do it? I use this intercompany equity account here. And all this does is on the 264 union account, it shows an intercompany equity. It's like an intercompany loan. It's like the one business invested in the other. One of these is gonna be positive, the other's gonna be negative. It's gonna always net out to zero. Your accountant's gonna love it, I guarantee it. This happens all the time. This is not a big deal. Now I've got this 5,000 thing to deal with as well, or the 7,500. The cool thing about this journal entry is we can use one giant, big, strong journal entry to do all this work, right? So I can take that Visa account, okay? And I need two lines for my visa, right? The 7,500 for 264 Union, it needs to move over here. So I need to zero that out, right? So I, for 264 Union, I need to debit that 7,500, okay? For JMB, I need to credit it because it needs to move over there, okay? 7,500 on this side. Again, I can't just say I'm done, right? I, I can do it to show you this, to, to move it over, but now I'm gonna be off on my assets equaling liabilities and equity, right? So I've successfully moved it, great, but now my assets, liabilities, and equity don't equal each other. I have to adjust my intercompany stuff, okay? And just as I did before, I'm gonna click and drag this JMB up here so I can kind of see them all together. I've got $10,000 in credits. I've got $7,500 in credits. I better debit this. 17,500, right? And the same thing's gonna happen with my intercompany down here. So this account, this intercompany equity, just serves as our kind of clearing account to indicate when one business kind of invests in the other, right? So we don't need to tie ourselves up in knots with all these weird transactions. We can sort it out at the end of the year. And that's the important thing, is this should be like the last transaction you do at the end of the year. Let these balances settle, let them go where they're gonna go after you reconcile everything. Just a nice, clean, one single journal entry, get everything where it needs to be, such that I can get a nice, clean balance sheet by business that doesn't show anything that isn't on that business, right? So these are three pitfalls to avoid when you're using this amazing strategy. And I promise you the strategy is so worth it. These are just things that you have to be have to be on your radar. If you ever see the balance sheet not equaling out your assets, not equaling liabilities and equity, this is why. Uh, and I haven't saved this yet, so that's an issue. Uh, uh, this is why it's not happening, okay? So definitely use this strategy. Don't think of these mistakes as like, oh man, it's gonna be impossible to keep in check. I guarantee you it's gonna be way better than creating a new subscription for all of the different entities that you have, all right? Check out Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We go into this in great detail. Check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com. And I wanna know your questions, your comments. If you're trying the strategy and you're struggling, let me know. I will be able to serve you here and I'll see you on the next video.